A Jedi's power lies within his own mind. Are you even listening to me? What? Yes. Um, you were saying, may the force be with me? No, I did not. Jedi Knight. <laughs> Jedi dumbass. So I recently finished watching that 70s show again. It's been about a decade since the last time I've really seen the series. So it was almost like new to me. And while watching the show again, I felt a lot of nostalgia. I genuinely laughed at many scenes in the show, and it's very hard for me to find a television show that captures my attention quite like this show does. And although so many of its show's characters are timeless and unforgettable, there is one character in this show that truly stands out to me. Red Foreman is my favorite character on the show. He is excellently portrayed by Kurtwood Smith. Red Foreman is a character that never fails to entertain me, and in my opinion, he is the greatest TV dad in the history of TV dads. That's my opinion, so don't roast me. So many other shows make dad characters these uninteresting gray characters with almost no plot relevance. Especially nowadays in the cesspool of garbage television that networks just crank out every year now. I can think of only a few television dads that are as memorable as he is. Red Foreman is just one of those characters where the older you get, the more you identify with them. Reginald Albert Foreman, commonly referred to as Red, is the father of That 70s Show's protagonist, Eric Foreman. Red was born December 7th of 1927. He has served in both World War II and the Korean War as a member of the Navy and he eventually settled down with his wife Kitty, who is the mother of his two children, Lori and Eric. His relationship with the family members are very dynamic. Red can be very anxious about dealing with his wife when things become complicated, and with his children, Red can either be friendly or a stone wall. In earlier seasons, Red treats Lori as if she is an only child, never placing blame on her, perhaps because he would like to believe that she is some innocent girl, but we know she's not. Red usually views Eric as a disappointment. Red is the type of father that wanted nothing more than to teach his son how to play sports. But as we know, that didn't pan out. Red can be pretty hard on Eric in most cases. However, Red's personality is not static. Red eventually accepts that Lori is not the perfect daughter that he thought she was, and in his mind, Eric isn't as bad as he once thought. On the few occasions where Red and Eric get to bond, their relationship grows a little bit, and each time they come to understand each other a little better. Red is a hard-working man. He is of course a member of America's greatest generation as they call it, and he has worked numerous jobs up until his eventual retirement in season 8. Like many other people of his generation, Red values morality and a good work ethic. He is a handyman who is capable of keeping his own home in top shape. When Red isn't working, he likes to indulge himself in his hobbies, which usually consist of hunting or fishing, sometimes both. Red has elements of a classic TV dad, but unlike many classic TV dads, Red is not limited to just being another TV dad. Red goes beyond where so many other TV dads go. He is present not just in every episode, but nearly every plot. He normally plays a large role in many different episode plots, usually as a man versus man type conflict, where he serves as an obstacle for the show's young protagonists. Take for example the innumerable amount of times that the gang has smoked weed in his basement. They know Red will never tolerate pot smoking, yet they do it anyway, even when they've been caught by him on multiple occasions. You see, Red is the polar opposite of Eric and his friends. While they relish in debauchery and fornication, Red sees this as the main reason as to why Eric and his friends are, as he likes to put it, dumbasses. I'm just surprised that Red allows the gang to hang out in his basement after all they've done. For most of the series, it seems as if Red really doesn't care what other people think about him. But on one occasion, Red realizes that not caring might not be the best idea, for he fears that when he dies, no one will care. This drives Red to control his anger around people, like neighbor Bob. You may think Red is some cold, unfeeling brick wall, but in truth he is not. Red has shown that he does care about those around him on multiple occasions, and if you pay enough attention to Red's character development throughout the series, 
you will realize that it's not that he has no emotions. It's that he doesn't want to show them. He is like many men. He's learned that a man should not show emotion around others. Although he hasn't always given 100% of his support to those around him, he has done good for many people. When Hyde was abandoned and left homeless by his mother, it was none other than Red Foreman that allowed Hyde to live with the Foremans. It was Red that allowed him to move back in after a few screw-ups and after living with his presumed father. It was Red that treated him like a second son, and it was Red that refunded Hyde all of his rent over the years. And although Red usually gives some harsh ultimatums like with Eric's college and the wedding, I personally think it's just the way he was raised. I believe that no matter how harsh a character like Red is, he cares, and he believes that he's doing things the right way. Red is not only useful for enhancing the plot, he himself has been in many interesting plots. In fact, his plots are some of my favorite in the show. One of my favorite examples has to be the one where Red inadvertently becomes a drug dealer. All he wanted to do was unload some heart pills he had purchased and make his money back, but of course, with the help of Hyde, Red becomes the go-to guy for the local over 50 community. These are the moments I watch the show for. The anticipation of Red coming on the screen and doing his thing is one of my favorite things in that 70s show. I have never been disappointed by Kurtwood Smith's performance. His line delivery is perfect. I cannot bring a single gripe against it. I just wish I could see Smith in more major roles. The character Red is expertly written to where he can be both serious and funny at the same time. I find myself laughing more and more when I watch his scenes even when he's threatening someone. Red isn't a funny man who tries to make people laugh. He's just naturally a likable and relatable character that delivers lines in an entertaining manner. Red Foreman is a very complex and dynamic character. His exterior is very rough and unfeeling, while his interior is thoughtful and caring. He's not as insensitive as one might think. Red is a no-nonsense, hard-working family provider. He stands his ground no matter what, excluding some occasions with Kitty and he sticks by his morals. Red isn't afraid to tell people if he has a negative opinion of them. He doesn't put up with other people's BS either. Just know that if you piss off Red, be ready to get your ass prepared for his foot. But let's not forget that Red truly does care for his family and friends, even if he doesn't often show it. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. I have more videos coming in the future like this one. See ya. Dad, you sold my car? How could you? Bitch, what in the hell were you thinking? I thought I was helping because you're always saying how you need money. For gas. For the car. Don't yell at him. But to be honest, Red, we're a little disappointed. I'm not going to be running any more errands for you, pal. You should have checked with us first, Red. You know how many times I rotated those tires? You're not supposed to take things that aren't yours. I had stuff in the back seat. Now that's all just gone, mister. Foreman, it's OK. No, th it's not OK. Look, Red. Who did you sell the car to? I sold it to a guy named Peter. Peter Cottontail. Up and down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity Easter's on its way.